Education, not decoration. 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 excited when they said it was an equal pay review and I was like this is fantastic the world's moving forward we're being recognized actually women are going to get paid the same as men I was like this is fantastic so when it was all coming about I, I was like brilliant then when I found out it's got 25% cut I was like hang on a minute the dispute is actually about changes to terms and conditions and not um, about the outcome of the equal pay review predominantly school support staff many teaching assistants but also midday supervisors admin workers the first thing we had to tell our members in September 2015 was in actual fact they had gained, they'd, they'd actually gone up one grade in the equal pay review, they'd gone from a grade four to a grade five, but what the council did at the same time was they squashed the pay line downwards so that each grade was worth less. That was their choice, they didn't legally have to do that. The council have made it a cost saving exercise. Now the majority of TAs are women, so if it's an equal pay review to balance the pay between men and women, how can all of us have been dropped 25%? Harmonisation, as Derby City Council have called it, harmonisation of terms and conditions, which is moving everybody to a 37 hour working week. That's what they're trying to say, that we all need to have the same terms and conditions, but in actual fact, we haven't got harmonisation of terms and conditions because it hasn't affected teachers and it hasn't affected other people employed by the authority. The dustbin men in Derby were on the same pay grade as us when we went through the equal pay review. They got a £2,000 increase in their wages while we had a dip of 25%. Where's the fairness in that? I am a single parent mother, so I want a good life for my children. But when I go into school, I see those children as my children as well, because we're there to help them, to help them with their maths, their literacy, whatever. We don't want to strike, we really don't, because we're thinking those children, and when we do go back into school after we finish striking, those children always run up to us and say, Miss, where have you been? We've missed you. And it, it is touching, but we just want what we deserve, equal pay. The best off teaching assistant was earning something like just over £19,000 a year and these changes have resulted in that being reduced to um, potentially around 15000 Some schools have offered what we call in temporary mit mitigation, they've offered some additional hours over and above their 32 and a half hour contract to try and mitigate the loss. But what we're finding now is as budgets are being cut and reduced, those temporary hours aren't being offered. So whilst they might have lost 200 pounds initially they're now finding that that's looking like more like 400 a month the hours that are being offered to people the mitigation is being um, agreed on a school by school basis which is something that this authority has chosen to do whereas for example our neighboring authority in derbyshire automatically moved people to a 37 hour contract they went up in grade they were moved to 37 hours and ended up just about where they'd started. We did a study of what we would get if we were on benefits and we would actually get more on benefits than staying in our jobs. The worst affected people didn't receive any mitigation and may have also lost the special classroom allowance so some people have lost up to £500 a month and that's with no pay protection, no lead-in, no phasing in, it was like going off a cliff edge. On the 1st of June, that was it. Not only have we got a 25% cut, but we also don't get given our special classroom allowance now, so which means, so obviously for some of our young people, they can be challenging, um, there's been physical confrontations which have had to split up, um, there's obviously aggressive behaviour and also a, a lot of emotional one-to-one -one support that's needed, a lot of nurturing for other students that need that kind of like support network to be able just to get on with their work and um, that's um, emotionally draining for the TAs because of the amount of the level of support that's needed and actually taking that special classroom allowance away it's um, we're doing a specialised job, we've trained in them areas and we do training specifically for those young people so for that to be taken away it's a bit of a kick down when we're actually we're doing this because we're passionate and we want to see those people that have less opportunities more of a chance to thrive in their future. I've got one of my friends out there, she's visually impaired and I usually um, give time to volunteer to help her and her friends to get out, to go and see the community, help them do the shopping. But I've had to take a second job to cover my losses that I can't now do that stuff that I do voluntary because I'm passionate about my job. So I've had to change my lifestyle, a lot of people have. I have had to sell my house. Um, you know, I've recently moved. 
um, because I could no longer afford my mortgage. There's a lot of people who've been forced to leave, a lot of people have been forced to take on second jobs. I've had a meeting in a school in the morning with members and then I see them working on the checkout at Tesco's to make up their money. Many of my colleagues and myself, we will stay and um, do like safeguarding reports. We'll go and pick students up before school to make sure that they're getting on time because actually they have disrupted home life. Um, so they need that support and that structure. And there's many a times where we've had to do incident reports and you're there for an hour after, but we're not bothered about that because actually it's about the safety and the welfare of the young people but actually to we, we can't continue to do that because we're running ourselves into the ground with and then adding an extra job on top of that it's it's just too much one school that was hard hit um, had seven teaching assistants left just before Christmas we've been in a recent meeting with head teachers and they're telling us that there's um, um, a problem recruiting people would probably say well why don't you get another job but to us well, I'm very passionate about my job, I love working with the children and when you do get results, when the children can hardly read, write, spell, do their maths and you see the rewards of what we do and we work alongside the teachers, even sometimes we do more than what the teachers do and it is so rewarding to help those children in the classes and I love my job. I am a teacher but I'm here as a parent, I've got Isla who's six. Um, at an excellent primary school, so I'm here to support, and I've got the twins as well who are going into education in four years. The job that the TAs do is um, absolutely vital. They work with some of our most vulnerable young people, and I think even before the pay cuts, they weren't paid enough. At Isla's school, um, they're absolutely fundamental and a pivotal part of the school, and it wouldn't run and hasn't been running without them. I've been to university, done a degree, numerous training courses to keep up to date with what's going on. We have to keep up with the curriculum, we have to know the safeguarding. We do just as much as the teacher a lot that, of the time. Well, that includes marking, evaluating the children's work, planning for lessons that we actually uh, um, teach, um, and often it's to do with evaluating children, target setting, because we all have our own groups that we teach literacy to uh, and we plan for those ourselves. The teachers don't plan and we do. Um, and we've had more and more of <laughs> teachers' jobs being foisted onto us for no uh, remuneration uh, and our stress levels have gone up. The Momentum members, the general feeling is we want to support the TAs. It's just not fair and we are disappointed that it's a uh, Labour Council that is enacting these cuts. I mean, we understand that a lot of the pressure comes from central government and the Tories, but we are disappointed that Labour haven't found a way to um, to work around this and to give the TAs what they deserve. <laughs> With big support to Jeremy Corbyn and the leadership, but. Some of the feelings of those people aren't being reflected in local councils necessarily and we would encourage local councils to step up and start showing the socialist attitudes that we all stand for in this party. People are uh, not very happy with the council at the moment because they've taken quite a lot of the immunities away from Derby. We've got no public uh, amenities in, in Derby anymore. The only ones are in the Into Centre. Um, they closed both our swimming pools at one point. The local museums are down to one or two openings a week. Um, they've wasted money uh, on a velodrome that they built and they paid for the wrong uh, floor, so that's had to be redone at a cost. They paid for these wings. The wings. They had a donation of 500,000, but then they then had to put one and a half million on top. And there's no money. right from the start involved school support staff in the negotiating team and when we realised the impact we put information out to the members to tell them this was coming. We've got 72 schools, we visited every school and the message right from the start was strike. 
We've recruited stewards on the back of this. We're actually still recruiting members who want to take part in action. We've got a fantastic group of campaigning members. We can cover an entire electoral ward in a day by door knocking, collecting petition signatures, getting people to write letters and sign letters. They are absolutely amazing. In actual fact, the imposition date was supposed to be the 1st of January 2015, and we did get that pushed back because of our resistance to the 1st of June. The original offer offered a thousand pounds, a one-off payment subject to tax national insurance, so it was worth about 620 quid. And that was only going to be paid to people who'd lost the special classroom allowance, which is worth 1,200 pounds a year. It was rejected, then they increased it to 2,000 pounds, and our members overwhelmingly rejected that. They came back with a third offer, and again, it was offering a cash payment to the special schools and some very temporary mitigation up to the end of this academic year. For some schools they were hoping to negotiate that school by school and again it was rejected because the majority of our members weren't going to benefit at all. tonight um, for, for full council um, but also you know as a unison member I couldn't walk past this happening we need to find a solution it's clearly something that I'm hearing about from residents in my ward very frequently the people of Derby you know they're, they're out in, in force tonight and I, and I couldn't walk past and ignore that and you know people have told me some home truths tonight um, and I've heard from teaching assistants across the piece and you know I, I just hope that we can find a solution because we really have to We're in this until it's resolved. If people think that they can get away with this in one area, where else is it going to go to in education? Are they going to try and change teachers' terms and conditions? Are they going to try and change different ways of learning or change how it's funded? It's, it's not fair. It's, the children are what the future is. Education, not decoration. Education, not decoration. Education, not decoration.